Hi, I'm in dire need of a haircut, but today I wanted to talk a bit about ROACT because that's what I've been trying to learn over the past uh, week or so. Um, I've got some uh, really great help from some cool people, and uh, they have advised that I should uh, go poking around in the sources of some plugins. So I went through the entire source or the Roho, um, of the uh, Roho plugin, and I looked through all of these components, the source of every single uh, component, and it... Um, took quite a while. I uh, started um, the night at, at a I started at nighttime and finished um, next nighttime. I did sleep in there, don't worry. But uh, it was it was tricky to learn. But once I had like truly grasped the concept of how exactly everything works together, it became easier to understand. Um, and finally, I uh, figured, you know, there's only so much you can learn from reading, and at some point you just have to, you know, get your hands dirty. So I made a tooltip module, and I can go ahead and test the game so you can see it in action. Um, it's very simple functionality. It, you know, you just, um, it checks whatever you're hovering over, and um, if, it, if that object has been assigned a tooltip, then it renders a tooltip next to your thing. And uh, you can also assign multiple tooltips, and they'll like just stack one after another. And uh, you can't see it here, but if you get too close to the edge while you're hovering over a thing, and like it starts going off the uh, the bounds, it'll figure out which side to put it on where it has the least clipping, and it'll switch it to that side. And uh, yeah, that's it was a pretty fun experiment, and I'm glad I did it. Uh, however, um, I've learned two things. The first is that. Um, not every project makes sense to turn into a Roax project. Um, if I were literally only doing the tooltip, I and I were to do it again in like an actual production environment, I definitely would not um, use Roax for it because um, a normal tooltip module for me is like 100, 200 lines of code at the max. This was 600 lines of code. And I spent like three days doing it. So, um, you know, there was a bit of a learning curve in there. And so that's, that should be accounted for some of, um, some of that time spent, but, uh, yeah, it makes sense for some things to just, you know, not everything needs to be rocked. You can, you can use portals and stuff to, uh, like embed rock stuff in non rock stuff too, which is pretty neat. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to learn. And the second thing I learned was, uh, a, uh, more major one now, um, I had no idea what the benefits of Roact were, really, when I started looking into it. Everyone told me it was a stateful management library. Wow. What, what, what does that mean? I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that means. Small brain. So I uh, looked into it. Uh, well, no. I looked into it and couldn't really understand it. So I just, all right, let's just start working with it. And I think I get it. So first off, actually making, just like from scratch, the GUIs, significantly harder <laughs> than just, you know, you doing it visually and using the um, the parts as templates, basically. But the actual management of the, um, like, basically, yeah, the state management is what the term is. Like, um, where the tooltip is on the screen and what the text is. It's like, it's so easy to just change the uh, text or the position or any of the, uh, any of the visual elements because that's what state management means. It means that Roact handles the state for you. And so what I've what I've um, taken from it is basically it's much harder to initially make the GUIs, but it's much easier to like script behavior into them and like how they how they should act and how they should um, how they should change based on the state of that object or other objects. And uh, so yeah, um, I definitely haven't done it justice with a tooltip module, but um, you know I'm pleased with it and I've. Uh, made it with four components. There's um, fit text, which is basically just copied from the one in Roho, except it's not as good. Shrink wrap, which is like fit fit text if it was a uh, frame. Um, you got the uh, tooltip, which is um, a um, just a shrink wrap with two fit texts inside, and you got a um, tooltips container, um, which is a container for tooltips, and so it is a um, a shrink wrap full of tooltips and that's how you get that um that stacking effect and um the code to make it um so it follows the mouse is in this tooltip engine thing um so the the main function here is um tooltip engine colon assign it um 
it saves all the tooltips in uh, this thing. So when you assign it with tooltip info, if there's an actual body, then it, um, yeah, so there, ha there always has to be a body for it to accept it. And if there's no body, it just um, removes that thing. And also one limitation of the way I'm currently saving it is that you can only have one tooltip per object. So there's some stuff I want to figure out with that to um, make it so you can have multiple tooltips per object, like maybe depending on the state, that kind of thing. Um, then there's the update function, which um, is not actually used by React, I don't think. Yeah, it's uh, used in the assign function, and it is also used um, with check mouse movement, which runs every frame. Um, so if the, it only updates if the mouse moves, and it will also update when a new tooltip is assigned. And uh, this function down here uses this very wonderful get GUI objects at position function, which I did not realize actually returned objects in order of appearance. So um, the first element in the in the array is always the the top element that's um, like showing on top of all the other elements, which is super cool. I love it. Um, so because of that, I also added some like transparency thing where um, you could basically make it so um, if you have one um, element that would show a tooltip and then another one on top, uh, you can make it so the top one has um, transparency so it'll actually show both tooltips at once. I don't know when I'd ever need to use that really, but it's just an experiment. Um, yeah, so I have had a lot of um, headache moments over the past couple of days, but I I think I like Roact. Again, I... Um, I shouldn't have used it for this project, but uh, you know, it worked out all right. And I am pleased with this tooltip thing. And I, uh, yeah, I'll come up with something to make next. Might be another Roblox project. Maybe I'll keep talking about Roblox projects. I don't know. Um, would also be nice to uh, do something that, yeah, specifically isn't tooltips. Oh, the theme. Oh, I forgot to mention. I made a theme, and it's just got the title and the body and the tooltip, and uh, uses a context thing. Um, I used this create context function without realizing it wasn't actually available in a uh, stable React release. <laughs> so what I did is um, I just copied the uh, React release that is in the uh, Roho plugin because it's using a, uh, a newer version that actually isn't technically defined as stable, but I mean, stable enough to use it in the plugin and it's working for me. So uh, yeah, context is a um, thing that basically has a provider and a consumer. Um, the provider is the thing that provides this information and the consumer is essentially something that just accepts where is the, it's somewhere, I know it is. Here we go. Um, you just require the theme and you use the provider. I mean, yeah, so a consumer is basically just a, uh, like there's this with, with function and um, inside of this with function, you return, you, uh, you get the, basically what you're after is this, um, this theme argument right here. And uh, I have not been sharing my screen. Okay. I'm not going to redo this recording. So sorry. That's it. Goodbye.